Have you ever stopped and asked yourself why the universe has a speed limit? We all know the rule. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light. 299,792,458 meters per second. But why? Why is there even a cap on how fast information or cause and effect can spread? And if such a limit exists, why that very specific number? Why not double? Why not half? When you think about it, this law feels strangely arbitrary, like a hidden rule baked into reality. And yet it defines almost everything about the universe we live in. Today, let's dive deep into this mystery. We'll explore light, time, and space through the lens of hyperbolic symmetry and 4D thinking. Along the way, we'll see how light itself may perceive the world in a completely different way. And why the cosmic speed limit might not just be a number. It might be the very shape of the universe itself. From our perspective, light always moves at the same speed. It doesn't matter if you're standing still, running toward it, or racing away from it. No matter your point of view, light insists on traveling at exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. But here's the paradox. From the perspective of light itself, this doesn't seem true. Einstein's theory of relativity is us that, as you approach, the speed of light time slows down. If you could actually become a photon, time for Yao would stop completely. If you wouldn't experience any passage of time at all. Imagine this. You set off toward Jupiter, staggering 679 million kilometers away. At the speed of light, you'll derive there instantly from your perspective. Zero seconds pass for you, yet you've crossed a colossal distance. Here's the problem. Speed is distance divided by time. Distance is not zero, but time is. It gives you distance side divided by zero, which is infinity. From light's own perspective, it doesn't crawl along at sea. It moves infinitely fast. So why do we, the slow creatures, stuck inside time, measure light at this very precise finite number? What stops us from seeing it is infinite? Understand what's happening, we need to stretch our imagination into a higher dimension. Let's picture all of 3D reality compressed onto a flat sheet. Then let's make up and down represent time. Space goes left to right. Time goes up and down. In this model, time is not some magical ticking clock. It's just another direction. You can move in like north or south. And just as with normal space, you can split your motion into different components. You can move mostly through time. Or you can tilt your trajectory and move partly through space as well. But here's the kicker. In this 4D reality, space is not flat. It's hyperbolic. And hyperbolic means that lines never stay parallel, they bend away from each other, diverging endlessly. The further you move out, the more warped things become. This bending of the fabric of reality is the secret to why speed is capped. This is where geometry, specifically hyperbolic geometry, comes in. Now, imagine the Big Bang, a colossal. 4D explosion sent everything rushing upwards through time. That's the default motion of the universe. Everything is carried forward, moment by moment, into the future. You don't feel this movement because it's constant. Just as a passenger on a perfectly smooth train doesn't feel motion, you don't feel your own relentless fall through time. But what happens when you try to deviate? Let's say you want to shift a bit sideways, move through space instead, off just. Straight ahead in time. To do that, you need energy. A rocket, an engine, a push. The more you push, the more your trajectory tilts. As you pour in more energy, your motion leans further toward the horizontal, meaning more space, less time. Bothers the problem. You can never quite make your line perfectly horizontal. Number. No matter how much energy you add, your vector still contains some upward movement in time to go fully sideways to experience. No time at all you'd need infinite energy. This is where we hit the wall. A limit emerges. The universe resists your attempts to tilt any further. At first glance, our 4D model seems to say you could keep accelerating forever. The infinite energy, maybe you could move faster than light, but hyperbolic geometry changes. The story in hyperbolic space. Trying to tilt your path closer and closer to flat doesn't just require more energy, it warps your perception of time. You think you're racing ahead incredibly fast, 
maybe even faster than light. But what really happens is that you've bent your trajectory into a shortcut through time. From your perspective, you've traveled an enormous distance in almost no time. But when an external observer measures your journey, they see you arriving later than you expected. They calculate your average speed and it's always bellower at light speed. This right here is why we see a speed limit. Hyperbolic space-time bends your attempts to go faster into extra motion through time. The harder you push, the more time dilation kicks in. You can never actually exceed the universal cap. This explains the paradox of the photon. From light's point of view, it covers all distances, instant light fills some finite. But because it's trapped in the curved hyperbolic shape of the universe, from our perspective, it's Pinetto, a very specific finite. Speed it's as if the photon tries to take a perfectly horizontal path across space. But the geometry curves beneath it, and it ends up skating along the edge of the hyperbola. To us, that appears as uniform motion at 299,792,458 meters s. This theory suggests that the speed limit isn't some meant arbitrary cosmic law written on stone tablets. It's a geometric ensockance of the shape of space-time itself. The universe is curved in such a way that infinite speed gets reinterpreted as a very specific finite number. And that number, the speed of light, is woven into the very structure of reality. It also explains why time dilation occurs. Okay, the faster you move, the more you cheat through time. For you, this cons tick slower. But for others watching, you, the universe, insists you haven't cheated at all. You've just been a your path through hyperbolic space. So what does this mean for us? For one thing, it dashes the dream of breaking the cosmic speed barrier. No matter how much energy you throw at the problem, the geometry pushes back. The closer you get to the limit, the harder the resistance. It also suggests that true time travel to the past may be impossible. The very curvature that enforces the speed limit also locks time into a forward flow. Hyperbolic geometry is merciless, always expanding, always diverging. But there's still wonder here, because if this model is right, then high-speed travel really does let you take short kits into the future. Astronauts racing near light speed may return to Earth and find centuries have passed, even though they only felt a few years. It's not science fiction, it's baked into relativity. The more we uncover about the universe, the more it feels like reality is shaped not by arbitrary rules, but by deep mathematical truths. The cosmic speed limit isn't just about light. It's about geometry, perspective, and the way space and time intertwine. To us, light is the fastest thing imaginable. To light itself, the journey is instantaneous. And somewhere between those two truths lies the very structure of the universe. Maybe the speed of light isn't just a number. Maybe it's the fingerprint of the universe's hidden geometria reminder. Reality at its core is more elegant, strange, and beautiful than we can imagine. 